Okay. A very good morning to everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, Venka, ma'am. Kindly you should continue. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, I request, Ashwa, are you there? I request you to kindly uh, on your video, sir. प्रकाश जी आप अपने आप को अनम्यूट कर सकते हैं अपना कैमरा ऑन कर सकते हैं द एडमिन राइट हैज बीन गिवन टू यू हां हां अब आप विजिबल हैं प्रकाश जी ओके थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू नाउ यू कैन वेलकम गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग सर अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल इट्स अ प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर गेस्ट स्पीकर डॉक्टर प्रकाश कुमार डॉक्टर प्रकाश इज एन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सीएससी एंड आईटी Uh, he is also associate dean of students at JP Institute of Information and Technology, Noida. He has more than 26 years of academic experience. He has done his PhD in cloud computing, M.Tech in computer science and technology from IIT Roorkee, and bachelor's in engineering in ECE. His area of interest includes uh, Internet of Things, cloud computing, virtualization technology. Uh, distributed computing embedded systems microprocessors and controllers he is today with us to have an interesting and informative session on developing online repository of proof of concept develop and way forward with this i would request uh, professor prakash to kindly take over the session thank you sir thank you so much uh menka ma'am for your kind introduction and uh, thanks a lot for uh, the complete uh, iimt team for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, have few words to just uh, give few words to uh, and to have a good interaction with you all it's my pleasure and i feel uh, blessed to have this opportunity thanks a lot ma'am and thanks, thanks to the entire team uh, of iimt uh, so let me share a little bit of i'll move on with a little bit of a different perspective okay so uh, let me first i shall share the complete screen yes sir it is visible uh, i think uh, it's better to mute my video uh, audio is fine i think will it be fine will it be okay yes it is okay not yeah. an issue sir yeah yeah so that the bandwidth is saved and then uh, i shall share the is my slide visible yes it is visible na my slide is visible na yes sir yes sir it yes. is quite visible okay, thanks thank you thank you so much thanks a lot uh, can i have uh, some information as to how much time i am having i'll uh, just try to uh, wind it up in that may, um, so much so 60 of... minute timing you have 60 minute one hour okay 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 thanks a lot okay so let us move ahead so let me tell you uh, uh, the topic uh, the title is very much closer to and we'll look with a different perspective as to how these a uh, proof of concepts and online repository details can be taken forward with different technologies and trends and uh, to take into that because nowadays most of the management people and most of the technology uh, people they are moving on to th this direction uh, that is uh, for iot and cloud environment and using the online Uh, repository etc on to the cloud shifting on all their details and applications along with the database etc on to the clouds so i'll try to connect the technical and management part together taking into 
the details of why we are moving in this direction with certain proof of concept. So the angle will be different, but definitely it will be giving giving you a new arena of thought as to these are what are the trends that are going to be taken up in coming future. So that is how we'll try to move ahead. As Madam introduced, my name is Dr. Prakash Kumar. I am in JIIT Noida, JP Institute of Information Technology. So how are we going to address the trends for sustainability? Now, why we are talking of sustainability, sustainability, sustainability computing, sustainable management, sustainable energy systems, many things are moving around this sustainable buzzword. What's the reason behind that? So there is a big reason behind that. Let us have a little bit of light in that direction as to why we are talking of all the sustainability, whatever software developments, whatever technology trends, whatever managerial activities are there, everything is moving towards sustainable goals. What's the reason behind that? Even online repositories or whatever things are there, these trends, the future trends are moving towards sustainability. So this has become a, become a buzzword today. Uh, so let us first of all understand some of the things i think it's uh, everybody is already aware of but still i'll just try to shift the paradigm through these proof of concepts online repository on to the sustainable development using the technical trends and why we are moving on in this direction for online repository the databases the big databases big data analytics and all these things there is a reason behind these things. So let us try to understand these parts a little bit. So first of all, some terminology that is proof of concept very frequently used today in most of the uh, arenas. So what's this? What is this proof of concept? It is nothing but it is a quick implementation of an idea. So see, innovation, idea, creativity, all these things are going, are the major, pillars onto which the focus is being there of the bureaucrats, the designers, the technology developers, the IT giants, everybody is moving around these things. So some means picking up the idea, but that idea should not be uh, something like absurd. So there must be some proof of concept to make it uh, realizable means it's feasible so we'll have to study these things because of though these reasons these terms cropped up so what are these proof of concept is the quick implementation of an idea method initiative at a small scale initially not at last but initially at a small scale later on it can be uh, enhanced to a bigger scale and so and so 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 on so for these, since different areas of innovations are there, different areas of uh, methods are there. So we do require all these things uh, for our uh, understanding. So what, depending upon the types of projects, depending upon the types of implementations, depending upon the types of uh, products which we are developing, specific templates etc are designed as proof of for uh, proof of concept because every field is having some different attributes some different uh, artifacts some different parameters based on which specific templates etc are designed just to show that this is the perfect template this is the perfect tool which is going to lead us to a very feasible solution that's the reason for moving on to proof of concepts. Then after having the proof of concepts, we do go for feasibility test. Feasibility test means we have planned a very good idea. We have taken up very good uh, uh, creative projects, but it's not necessary that the same will be feasible to everybody. We need certain infrastructure. We need certain facilities. We need certain environment, computational environment, a physical environment, geographical environment, and so on. So everything affects on these uh, uh, projects. So feasibility test is required. OK, so that means we have got the uh, evidence. We collect the evidences to 
confirm that our project is feasible. So we go for feasibility test about our ideas before I do finally um, implementing it and then use certain testing methods etc to show that this is the feasible project which we have picked up. So that's how feasibility test is um, done. And then why we are going for all these things because proof of concept feasibility test what for we are going for this just to identify at the very early stage without doing lots of expenditure without putting lots of efforts without putting lot of lots of brains to do the project which leads to failure in near future because of some small reasons or the other okay so well before doing all these activities will help to identify the future needs, the future technology trends, etc. And based on that, if we go on moving ahead, then we'll see that the solutions are highly accepted throughout the world. So that's the reason we go for these things. And how we should do that? That is how. Uh, this is how we do that. That we should have a vision as to what is the trend in the near future what is the development trend that is going to be acceptable that is going to be acceptable among the human beings or throughout the society taking into consideration the environment and other such things energy savings and all these things so there are major reasons we'll see that how today the things the technology and the other plannings are going on um, depending upon what is the near future requirements and so on. So we predict the near future requirements, the technology trend which is going to support us, which is going to help us and what is the challenges of tomorrow's world. So are these developments or ideas sufficing to these future trends? That's the question. So that is how keeping in mind these things, we go for the proof of concepts and all those things. Of course, since we will see in the later part that online repository is playing a very important role because uh, if we look at the data in the coming slides, we'll see that lots and lots of data is getting generated or is supposed to be generated in near future and taking care of these data in a proper way, in a correct way is a requirement. Not only that, how much power consumption is used what are the hazardous effects of these of procuring these data? Of course, some power is required. Some computations are required to structure the data, to align the data, to man manage it according to our requirement, to store it, to transfer the data and so on. So of course, it needs a lots of lots of power and other communication technologies, etc. And so in the future, how we take care of these things, because this everybody is aware of that tomorrow, even today, lots and lots of data are getting generated because large number of digital devices are getting connected to each and every person. So we'll see some of the actual data. This is the reason that since large number of data is getting connected, large number of communication trends, large number of data is getting to be transferred from one place to another. Of course, large number of data is going to be processed. So for all these things, certain computational power is required. Energy is required. Now we are having the processors, the computers, the big frames mainframes and other such big machines which are doing the computations. So are they doing like that only? No, it's consuming large amount of power. We will see some data, hmm, some uh, correct data or the present data, and then we will understand that what are the now what are the ill effects of these since large number of energy is required. So to generate the energy, CO2 emissions are there carbon dioxide emissions are there and other environmental hazards are being there. Some environment is threatening to the environment is there on the wildlife and other such living beings uh, are there. So today let us take one example. Let us take one example. This will give us a good idea as to how the future is going to be. Suppose one company is developing a car. 
which is running by petrol. Suppose one company is uh, one manufacturer, car manufacturer is developing a car which is running at 200 kilometers per hour with this speed, but it is running by petrol. On the other hand, another company is there which is developing an electric car which is running only by 100 kilometers per hour. The speed is half. Now, which one is going to be adopted? Which one will you prefer and why? We will prefer the one which is going at a speed of 100 kilometer per hour. Reason? It will not pose environmental threats pollutions and other such things because today the world is worried about that global warming and all these things are the challenges and why it's not my view it's the view of united nations and that's the reason this UNDP has said that sustainable development using iot and cloud is going to be the future online trends in coming years this has been the statement of united nations development program okay now so it means sustainable solutions are important let us try to understand are these really uh, these sustainable solutions are really mattering in uh, these uh, iot and cloud trends yes because lots and lots of data is going to be generated and we have to take care of power and sustainable development and that's the reason in recent years new computing area has been uh, cropped up and that is known as sustainable computing, sustainable management, sustainable energy sources and so on. So we do need to understand the technology. See, thinking about the technology is one thing, but getting it implemented in a feasible way with proof of concept is another thing so whatever things we are thinking that okay we need to go for sustainable solutions but are these feasible are we having any proof of concepts lots and lots of data will get generated are we able to manage this data and how we are managing this data because online data generation uh, is going to be very large in the coming future with lots of inculcation of iot and cloud environment internet of things every device is going to be smart tomorrow even your pen your pencil your uh, watch is already smart and other your glass is going to be smart your fridge is going to be smart something like this so we want to make each and every devices smart of course the data will be generated power will be consumed so how do we go for technologies so let us look at are these technology trends sustainable technology trends feasible so we'll look at that uh, let us look at this gartner uh, we, we would have heard the name this gartner is the is a research and consultancy organization of united uh, usa what it does is that for every product for every technology for every trend it just publishes a uh, cycle a table every year for each of the technologies for each of the trends and any technology when it it is developed it follows this trend that is for sure so management people they need to understand this uh, very much clearly so whenever any technology trigger is there suppose any technology mobile technology telephone or 5g or anything it passes through this cycle this is for sure OK, it will always pass on through this cycle. Let us take an example of mobile. So initially in 1995, 96, 97, it was over here. So first generation of products, they get developed and then the price is very high. Lots of lots of customizations, etc. are required. Then mass media hype occurs. OK, this mobile can do this. This mobile can do that and so on. And slowly we try we just go on realizing that no, there are limitations also. These mobiles can't send the smell. These mobile, we can't send the fragrance through the mobile. We can't send the directly the physical foods. Okay, we can order the foods, but we can't send it physic physically over the <clears throat> mobile, something like this. But of course, we can send the audio, the picture, the, all these things, which was almost a dream in uh, before 1990s. 
Okay, so it goes on through this cycle. Any then second generation products they develop a little bit of prices are reduced. Then third generation products and finally it is adopted by the mass and then optimal products are there thrown into the market and lots and lots of people they take the advantage of these things. So any technology when it triggers it starts it follows this cycle this is for sure okay so this is how the detailed one of that one see r d happens then we develop the technology companies start first round of startup companies first round of venture and so on so this will be the trend for each and every company in whatsoever field it is so mass media hype then negative press becomes then less than five percent of the potential audience has adopted second generation third generation here see high growth adoption is there 20 to 30 percent so the technology trend will follow this thing like that okay so here we are having a mass pluto of productivity that is what happens over here now let us look at why i am showing this because every technology or trend will follow these things not only technology or trends even the social analysis social uh, fields they also follow the same trends Okay, <clears throat> take for example, take for example, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are quite audible, sir. Thank okay, you. okay, thank you. So let us take the hype side. This is known as Gartner's hype cycle. So let us see every year in the month of July or August, it is presented. So let us look far behind 11, 12 years back in July 2009 this was the technology trend this was the technology trend emerging technologies hype cycle for emerging technologies this was published everybody can have this data this is uh, openly <clears throat> available uh, on the google you can search it out in uh, gartner's hype cycle as a gartner's hype cycle so see let us try to understand this what does this color diagram means see here we are having cloud computing means in 2009 cloud computing was at its high peak of inflated expectations lots and lots of expectations were there from cloud okay in 2009 now whether it is going to be adopted it depends upon how it is moving through ahead through these phases trough of disillusionment slope of enlightenment and then pluto of productivity it is not necessary that it will pass on through this one sometimes because of other fields of development some of the technologies they die they become obsolete before they reach the pluto of productivity this also happens but usually in most of the cases these technology trends are correct okay in more, in more than because this organization it does a lots of research by taking up information and data from lots of and taking up lots of inputs from all directions from omni directions to publish these uh, hype cycles say for example now see the color cloud computing in 2009 was at its peak of inflated expectation what does this light blue color shows? It says that it will take two to five years for mainstream adoption. It means 2009 means by 2015. I'm showing you the past data just to show that, just to tell that, yes, this gives you a good feasible study, mm, feasibility of the trends which is going to be in the near future. So see, this indicates light blue it indicates that two to five in two to five years cloud computing will be in mainstream adoption and if you look at two to 2009 and you are add five years 2014 of course by 2011 12 and so on cloud computing was adopted it got its adoption means lots of organizations they went on deploying their complete infrastructure onto the cloud more than 40 percent of the world uh, it giants they took uh, their uh, applications and their complete data moved on to the cloud okay today it's more than that so it was in mainstream adoption by 2014 be even before that and today you see that lots and lots of things are moving on to the cloud without cloud we can't work today hmm. 
So that's the thing. Similarly, take up another thing, another anything, green IT. It I mean two to five years for mainstream adoption. Yes, lots of computational powers are there to do a sustainable computing, green computing, green IT solutions, etc. Just to save the environments and lot of things are there which is working on these directions. So almost all the things which is published over areas, they are almost correct. OK, so home health monitoring. This is dark blue color means it will be in main in stream adoption in five to ten years. Ten years means 2019. Yes, you see today mainstream adoption means health monitoring systems are today mostly getting uh, implemented. Then if we go for 3D printing, yes, today we are adopting 3D printing after 10 years. If we go for mobile robots, still works are going on. Now this is the trend which was published in 2009. Now let us move ahead. OK, let us move ahead. Technology trend in 2010 was something like this. Technology trend in 2011 was something like this. Technology trend in 2014. Let us look at 14. Now at this point of time, even IoT took birth. Internet of Things. This one means five to ten years for mainstream adoption. And if you look at this was published in 2014, 2019, 20, 21, 22. Today you see we are adopting this uh, IoT, big data. Two to five to ten years. Yes, big data, big data. Bots are a come. Lots of works are going on in this direction. Look at where is this 3D scanners? Yes, today we are using that. Speech recognition already was there in uh, adoption, in mainstream adoption. Cloud computing moved over here in 2014. So this gives you some idea as to how the trend is going to move in near future. Data science. Big data, you can see this is the trend which was published in 2014 by Gartner and almost everything is correctly predicted. OK, so that is what this Gartner's. Uh, I would suggest that you refer these Gartner cycles for each areas to see what the future trend is going to be. What will be the near future trend? So these things are cloud and IoT technology wise. It's going to ad be adopted by almost in every sphere of life. So as this is the hype cycle for emerging technologies. Similarly, for every technology also, we are having the hype, uh, hype cycle. This uh, Gartner, they publish the hype cycle. Now this is the hype cycle for cloud computing. This is for emerging technology, the previous ones. This is only for cloud computing and that was published in 2012, August 2012. Now see, cloud in cloud also there are different sub areas. So these are the sub areas in which the developments will go on according to these explanations. As I told you, dark blue means it will take uh, five to ten years. So to see to today DevOps. Yes, it is in adoption 2012-2022. Lots and lots of universities have adopted certain courses on Dev DevOps. OK. Personal clouds, big data, say. Browser client OS right now I am uh, I got connected on browser client OS uh, for Microsoft team. You simply send me the link and I got connected. That is the trend which is in mainstream adoption today. OK, so it was predicted in five to ten years ahead in 2012 itself that this will be the requirement. We got connected to you people. That's that's how this research by Gartner they predict and that is how the world moves on. So this is a cloud computing trend for 2012. Similarly, for IoT also the hype cycle is for 2015. It is somewhat like this a big data, then 3D scanners, etc. etc. IoT is over here. Now, if we look at IoT, everybody is talking about IoT, IoT, RFID, and so on. So these technology you look at. We are moving according to the Gartner's hype cycle. So this technology RFID, it got 
its birth in 2000. Every product you see RFIDs are there, the cloths in malls, the products which are uh, stored in the malls, they are having RFID tags, etc. Okay, using those tags, we identify the product and we calculate its price and all those things. So it got its trigger in around 2000 and then it moves like this according to the Gartner's hype cycle. Similarly, IoT, it took birth in around 2008 or so and today if we look at we are over here which is this diagram was again this is the technology trend for both these comparative study of rfid and iot so iot is in mainstream adoption today if you look at pluto it's at a, a pluto of productivity so all these things are going on about iot so what is the Technology trend around which the world is going to move cloud and IoT, cloud and IoT. What it is going to pose, what threat it is going to pose, pose lots of power consumption, lot of data consumption, uh, storage, online repository and all those things. So see, this is the just for our understanding in 2016, IoT was having this trend in 2019. It was having this this trend now. See, autonomous vehicles, if you look at, this was published in, in the year 2019 for IoT. Autonomous vehicles are also, means this means more than 10 years. Means by 2028-29, you will see that most of the vehicles are driverless. Autonomous way, they are moving ahead. They are going on to door to door and they are making the deliveries without human human intervention that is going to be the future trend uh, the people uh, means those who are today at the age of 70 or so they use landline telephones did they ever imagine that tomorrow we are going to transfer each and every data onto the mobile after 20 years or something like that it was simply a dream Mm, not even going to be true if you say that yes we are having the phone and we can send the data we can even talk we can through uh, having the video picture that was only an imagination at that time and today it's possible so similarly autonomous vehicles will be there we are going for online purchasing online shopping means we put the order sitting in our home like this this was also only a dream few decades back but technology is making it possible so that's how we need to understand these trends so that when we go on for checking the feasibility of the products the ideas the innovations are we moving in the right direction are we going in the right direction or say if you develop a very good car today which is going to consume lots of petrol the speed is very high 500 kilometers per hour but it is going to consume one liter for every kilometer are you going to have that car not for common use and for some specific use we can choose but not for common use we will not go for that so we should see what today's thought process is there what's the future trend means today the world is moving towards procuring the future not disturbing the environment global warming and these things are becoming threats to the human lives to the uh, to other living beings to even uh, trees to animals to environment and the future is thing being thought taking care of those aspects lots and lots of organizations throughout the world are paying more attention to these sustainable solutions what is sustainable solution sustainable development sustainable development means you go on developing go on enhancing go on doing innovations in the future but the future without disturbing the future generations as i gave you the example you develop a car which is run by petrol even if the speed is double that is not given more importance in spite we shall move on to a car which is moving with half the speed but it is not generating any emissions or it is not posing any threat to the environment or not posing uh, uh, emitting pollutions and all those things not contributing to co2 emissions etc so that's all we will go for that one even if the speed is a little bit smaller and see today uh, electric vehicles are being getting introduced and in the near future we will move on to that 
and so on. So technology, we need to understand tomorrow's requirement, the technology trends, how the world is thinking, how we are moving on to. So and to go for these things, we should have an idea that yes, lots and lots of data will be generated lots and lots of repository will be required where this data will be stored will this data will be stored physically in certain areas if they are stored physically in certain areas without getting online repository then it will take a huge amount of computational power to transfer from one place to another and will not be accessible uh, from throughout the world. So cloud has facilitated to create big data centers where big data handling, big data storages are there. And then online repositories are being created with lesser amount of power consumptions. Mm. And not only this cloud, see when we will move on to internet of things when we are moving on to iot means your every de every device is going to be smart tomorrow so imagine how much of data will be generated so this is just a glimpse of three four years back that in every 60 seconds this much of data is generated was got generated 600 plus new youtube videos are loaded every 60 seconds this was the trend four five years back today it's more than that none of them is lesser than this one it is even more than that you can almost double the data today mm. but still look at 100 plus answers.com yahoo 40 plus uh, uh, areas are there then 13,000 plus iphone applications downloaded this much of things reads on on script d 13,000 plus hours of music streaming, etc. is there by Pandora and so on. So see how much data is getting generated. 695,000 plus Facebook status updates. It's even more than that. You can double it out. I don't have the current data of today. It's, this data is of three, four years back. Still see 168 millions of emails are sent every 60 seconds. Then imagine what will happen in 24 hours and where the data will be stored, how our online repository must be there. OK, so for these purpose only, we need the proof of concepts that whatever technology we are selecting, we are moving in the right direction. The, our innovations, our ideas, our creativity are most welcomed. But what about the feasibility it should be feasible solutions for the near future means it should be sustainable why we are talking of sustainable 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 let us see why sustainable why not the other methods etc we will look at so of course some of the devices which are going to be used in iot's for making the devices smart they are consuming powers they are generating lots of data Lots of data are getting generated, lots of powers, even batteries are there, battery backups are there, but still it is consuming power. Na? We need to provide those powers. We need to manage the energy. We need to save the energy. Every device is going to be smart. So power consumption is going to be very high. How do we bother about these things? Now it's a threat. It's a point of bother botheration for near future. OK, more and more things, everything going to be smarter and smarter and all those things. So data generations, power consumptions, etc. in every sphere of life is required. Hence, IoT, we are moving on to IoT, lots of sensors. Even um, if we I ask you your mobile phone, it's having lots of sensors, motion sensor, temperature sensor, different types of things are there. It's getting uh, sensors are there in our mobile. We are not aware of that. You just Google it and see that how much sensors are there in our mobile itself uh, for predicting all the things and it's giving you so like this. So people IOT, IOT, IOT means making the environment, making the world smarter. We you are using Internet of Things. So people connected to things, things connected to things and all these things D like this. The trend of IOT is going to be now see. We have heard a heard of one law, Moore's law. It says that the speed will develop, speed of computation 
computer speed will develop in every two years. Similarly, Chinese researchers, they predicted in 2009 that Internet also will double in every 5.3 years. Five years mein internet speed will double. Requirements will get doubled. Now see, lots of bandwidth. Imagine the data generation will move on to. Now look at this figure. In 2003, every person, world population was 6.3 billion. Every person, connected devices per person was 0 0.08, means one person was not even having each person in the world was not even having one device in 2003 but in 2007 8 almost every person were having equal that many number of devices so 6.3 billion persons 500 million devices here in 2010 6.8 billion population 12.5 billion devices connected devices. So per person, the device was 1.84. Now you look at 2020 and 22 today. The average devices per person is 6.58. And of course, if you look at, uh, you'll see that no, we are having only two, three devices, one or two mobiles. So you are having then laptop, you are having smart watch, you are having then other uh, Wi-Fi connectivity is there and other such things are there. This is the trend. Per person, this much number of devices are connected. 7.6 billion is the world population. 50 billion connected devices. This was in 2020. Now imagine it's going, it's, even larger than that. Most of, most of the things are becoming smarter. Devices means IoT devices, anything. Your smart watch is also a device. Your smart uh, mobile phone, other um, uh, this laptop and all these things. Per person, these devices are almost 6.5 or 6 around Okay, in 2020. So what does this mean? Why we are studying these things? Because lots of data will get generated. Lots of data will get generated. So, IoT, this will be the future networks. Anytime, any place, anything should be connected. Anytime, any place, anything will be connected. And this is what is the definition of Internet of Things. Everything will be smart. Your watch, your pen, your thermometer, because you are on the move. Somebody is having temperature immediately. That thermometer picked up the temperature, transferred to the doctor. The doctor is giving advice through that and you get the solution or the prescription as to go for such and such medicine. Then on the fly you are moving, you are identifying that uh, say what medical shop and from that medical shop you are getting the delivery when, when you are on the move. Something like this the world is going to be. So see this is the data, actual data which is published by IBM, the source is mentioned over here. Every day around 20 quintillion, means 10 to the power 18 bytes of data are produced. Imagine, 20 quintillion means 10 to the power 18 bytes of data are produced. Now calculate it into gigabytes and all those things, you'll see that it goes on petabytes and more than that, even more than that. This much of data is getting generated every day. And this data may be structured, unstructured. That's why today we are going on for different solutions for automating the things using machine learning, deep learning and artificial intelligence, etc. So lots of lots of images, videos, audios, enterprise, social media, textual data that is in structured, unstructured or different formats, multimedia contents and so on. These data are there. So all, as a whole, this much amount of data is getting generated. Of course, it's a, a thing to worry as to and these things since we are moving to the cloud, online repository is required. That is the reason the World Economic Forum, it said that it had the vision to shape, shape sustainable, inclusive and trustworthy digital future. And that's the reason people are going on adopting all these things. That is the reason. Now, 
IoT is one of the largest enablers for responsible digital transformation. You see, it is estimated that IoT alone can add $14, 14 trillion of economic value to the global economy by 2030. This is the prediction for two, up to three, uh, 2030. And it increases even more. And if you include industry 4.0 trend, this data will even go to a much higher level. That is what the future trend is going to be. Now, World Economic Forum, it's not my statement, it's the uh, statement of World Economic Forum where a big intelligent think tank is there. So according to World Economic Forum, 84% of IoT deployment deployments are currently addressing or having potential to address sustainable development goals, which is defined by United Nations. We all are aware that United Nations are having representative from countries throughout the world. 199 countries are members of these United Nations and these United Nations, United Nations <coughs> organization, this <coughs> develops or defines the future trends which is acceptable, acceptable by the world. <coughs> Sorry. Now certain goals are defined. Now 84% will be the IoT deployment. That is what the prediction of the World Economic Forum. Okay, such and such things are there. Let us move ahead with, uh, with some more data uh, with a little bit of faster. Say for example, if you are going for a sustainable solution, an IoT example with IoT solutions, how you design a smart building? You design a smart building which is saving energy lots of energy is saved if energy is saved what happens what is the net effect let us see substantial reduction in energy bills for owners that is one advantage then at the same time the government at local regional and national level will get benefited by because power is being saved and eventually collective energy saving uh, will lead to more energy production because more and more devices can be handled. Now, if we look at from society point of view, broader society benefit is their reduction of greenhouse gas emissions means CO2 emissions will be reduced, greenhouse gas emissions will be uh, <coughs> reduced and hence climatic changes will not be there. Uh, global warming will be reduced, human health will be uh, improved and other animal living beings health will be improved and ultimately the same thing is contributing to sustainability what is sustainability sustainability means developing without disturbing the future generation that is sustainable solution <clears throat> so let us look at it's not that we are talking about the trends these United Nations have redefined their goals, restructured their goals to move on for cloud and IoT solutions. How? You know, let me give you some data. Maybe you, some of you are already aware of, but still let me wind it up in two minutes. I'll just say <clears throat> this topic. Say in 2000, United Nations Development Program, uh, you can find out all these things at this source, United Nations Development Program.org, UNDP.org, all these things are picked up from that source. Okay, so in 2000, MDG was defined, Millennium Development Goal was defined by United Nations. 191 countries were members and 22 international organizations were there and these goals were supposed to be achieved by 2015. How many goals were defined? Eight goals were defined. What were these goals? These were the goals to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, to reduce child mortality, to improve maternal health and so on. So these were the eight development goals which were supposed to be achieved by 2015. Similarly, in 2016, 17 goals were defined and these goals are named as, earlier the goals were named as Millennium Development Goals. Now 17 goals are defined and these goals are known as Sustainable Development Goals and these goals are supposed to be achieved by 2030, 2030. 17 goals, 
and these goals are named as SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, which are supposed to be achieved by the target sets are to be achieved by 2000 year 2030. We have to achieve. So the world is moving in that direction. How many goals? 17 goals. Now these goals are internally having different 169 targets break into smaller parts. We'll move on to in which areas? Areas such as climate change, economic inequality, innovations, sustainable con consumption, peace and justice. Now these highlighted are the areas. <clears throat> OK, so to improve life, this is the motive. This is the motto of SDG of United Nations. Improve life in a sustainable way for future generations. We will have to move ahead. OK, now see. These are the 17 goals. You can refer to these things, these goals in details at UNDP.org. First one, no poverty. Second one, zero hunger. Third one, good health and well-being. Fourth one, quality education. Fifth, gender inequality and so on. So if you look at these solutions, these goals, for example, look at this 11th one, sustainable cities and communities. Look at this one, life on land. Look at 14th one, life below water. Climate actions, 13th one. Means in each of the directions, in each of these sustainable development goals, Internet of Things and cloud model is technically is going to help a lot. Am I wrong? No. Same thing, the data has been put up by C source IoT analytics database, database of 640 plus IoT projects. OK, of course, lots and lots of data will get generated as I showed you in the previous slides. These are the areas. So 75 percent of IoT projects focus on five of these SDGs, sustainable development goals means IOT and you can imagine. These are the summation of the IOT projects. How much data will get generated and see not only as I told you initially in the definition that uh, we are moving on for proof of concepts and all for small. I told that not only small from small to large to macro. We move on to that. So micro is small, medium, large and macro. We move on into these directions like these. The projects are been defined or are going on in different directions. OK. So IoT enablers for achieving sustainability. So database of over 640 IoT projects were mapped against 17 SDGs. 84 percent of the 643 analyzed IoT deployments support to have uh, support or have the potential to support the sustainable development goals. It means. The future trend that is which is to be achieved by 2030. IoT and cloud is playing a major role. Lots and lots of data generation, online repository, greenhouse effect, power saving, sustainable solutions, database management, big data handling. All these things are going to be the future trend because the goals have already been defined in the year 2016 itself. And we are moving in. So if you look at different policies of different organizations, different countries throughout the world, everything is moving in that direction. You look at not only in other countries, you look at in India, even the government of India policies are going to be made based on in such a way that sustainable solutions are being adopted. And today that's the reason in most of the cases smart cities. So government of India, our uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister uh, Shri Narendra Modi ji here, he announced that such and such cities will be declared as smart cities. Such all these things means moving on on to this direction. See, practically it's up there. So we need to think to adopt the technology and to support the innovations with which are going to be the sustainable solutions. So of course you see. One of the example I am showing you flood abatement programs are being. 
taken by picked up by United Nations, which are going to means target five or SDG nine. OK, so by 230. Significant reduction in number of deaths will be there. Logon ke marne ki sankhya kam ho jayegi by flood abatement program because most of the world population is getting uh, affected by flood abatement. So certain things will be R&D in this direction. I mean death, number of deaths will get reduced by 2030. Significant reduction in number of people affected by direct economic losses, water related disasters. So for that, projects are picked up. We need to work. Similarly, smart city energy, LED lights by, are implemented. What is that effect? What is the target? What is the effect? SDG 7 target 3 by 2030, double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency and so on. So like these, the projects are being picked up and you people are also many people are also doing the innovations, thinking of the um, creative solutions for these things. And of course, uh, for World Economic Forum, these are the strategic partners you can imagine. Accenture, at and Cisco, Google, uh, Ericsson, and so on. Many more organizations are there. So, of course, the technology trend will move in that way. Mm. Now, this is just one example uh, how the solutions are. You know, the rich people in Mumbai, they are paying rupees 2.2 for water bill for example, but per cubic meter, whereas the poor people are paying 74 rupees per cubic meter. Why? Because in poor areas like Dharavi or so, delivering cost is very high. What is the reason? Infrastructure is not there. So IoT will help in that to reduce that part and lots of projects are going on over there. This is just an example that the poor people are paying 37 times more than a human normal human being in uh, normal areas. This should not happen. Hmm. And that is how the things are being helped out by IoT and uh, cloud. So these are let me move on to some parts. What are what are the driving forces of IoT sensor technology, cheap miniature computers, low power connectivity, capable mobile devices and the power of the cloud, which is going to facilitate. Hence, contributions of IoT and cloud is very high. Lots of database is being generated. We need to work on big data analytics, big data handling, online repository and with these things as to we develop certain algorithms, we develop certain trends and techniques so that lesser amount of power is consumed. Sustainable solutions are there. That is how, for example, one of the technology which is in mainstream adoption today is Zigbee. Zigbee applications. So say in lots of directions, Zigbee is being used. It is very much similar to uh, Bluetooth Zigbee solutions are very much similar to Bluetooth solutions. So it is moving around data with the 10K to 115 uh, kbps. Uh, then the range is even more than that 10, 10 to 75 meters up to 100 meters it is. And many nodes, 65,000 slave nodes can be connected per network and so on. So these are some of the areas. Then different frequency frequency ranges which are used for these Zigbee solutions extra being mentioned, some technical part I'm just omitting. So Bluetooth, Zigbee, these technologies can be compared a little bit. Bluetooth we are already using, but if we go for Zigbee, uh, the solutions are even more beneficial and more powers will be uh, saved. So if uh, you should, we should motivate the students, we should motivate the researchers to move on to Zigbee solutions as compared to Bluetooth. So power profile, if you look at uh, Bluetooth solutions, they end for days, but here Zigbee year. So you can deploy the uh, devices and forget for years to come. Lesser complex, more uh, a little bit of complex, but this one is simple. And how much nodes? As I told you, 64,000 nodes can be connected, whereas in Bluetooth, this much it's limited to not even double digit and so on. So these are the trends. Some of the platforms of uh, which are clouds and IoT are IoT Cloud, Open IoT, IoT Toolkit, Nimbits, Open because they all are having databases 
their own databases, their own way to store the applications, to create virtual machines, to create vir using virtualization technology, etc. for online repository of resources, online repository of your applications as images and so on. So moving on to these things, we shall just identify the things speak, NetLab, Intel IoT analytics and so on. So these are the things which one is having what characteristics is being mentioned over here in different things. OK, so something like this, the trend is going to be in the near future uh, with this one. Uh, I would like to say that all these things are going to contribute towards the uh, along with the proof of concept of Gartner's hype cycle and data generation through cloud and IoT, how we are going on for solutions. So we should motivate the students to move in the, these directions. We should motivate the R&D research and development persons to think in this direction so that they are able to contribute the uh, sustainable solutions. And uh, with this much, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you so much for being patient. I think I have taken a lot of time. Uh, uh, one hour was given. I think I have finished up in one hour. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving me this uh, time. Uh, thanks thank, a lot thank to all the audience. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I take this moment to thank all the members without whom this event would not have been possible. On behalf of IIMT College of Management, I extend my thanks to our esteemed speaker for the day, Dr. Prakash Kumar. Thank you, sir, for providing your precious time from your busy schedule and enlightening us on the topic. Your inputs on proof of concept, Gartner cycle, hype cycle, development of online repository, IoT, sustainable digital development through Millennium Development Goals and Sustainable Development Goals and latest technological scope for entrepreneurs will be of great help to our listeners for their future endeavors. A big thank you and our gratitude towards our patron, Dr. Honorable Dr. Mayank Agarwal, sir, who has always supported our initiatives and directed us to the success. I would also like to thank our director, sir, Dr. Abhina Bakshi Bhatnagar, sir, who has always constantly mentored us for the success of the event. A heartfelt thank you to the president IIC, Dr. Amit Rai, sir, for providing his guidance and support throughout the session. Congratulations to our coordinators for making this event possible and a success. No event is successful without the wonderful audience. Thank you to our audience who for always being so patient and attentive throughout the session. In the end, I would like to recite an old quote. A mind that is stretched by new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. And on this note, I take the opportunity to conclude the session. Keep learning and thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It was a great opportunity. Thank you so much to the entire team and entire uh, management uh, authorities. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. <laughs>